Greetings from NDSU and, and all who are currently show 12 participants. I didn't expect a big turnout this morning, and, but as the email that I sent out earlier today indicated, we said we would meet regardless of drought or not, and or not seems to be the uh, predominant outcome. Is there anybody that's uh, sitting in a situation that's contrary to being wet right now? Yes, this is Kurt. Uh, the old saying of uh, who, you, who you talk to of what you get is really true. Um, Dickinson appears to be about the line. Anytime we, uh, I live west, about South Heart country. Uh, if we would get a half inch at my place, uh, Dickinson, three quarters of an inch and east, <coughs> or, and better, and that would be moving east. You get to Medora and then go up to Grassy Butte, and in that country, uh, those folks, um, if there was, when that half inch was coming, they might get 10 hundred. So uh, there is an, basically the Badlands. They are dry. All right. Thank you. Thanks for, that quick, some rain. thanks for that quick update. It's, it's, uh, it's certainly uh, suggests that we can't make any general assumptions about the entire state. I, I can't help but uh, muse just a moment here. Uh, early on when I was Extension Dairy Specialist, I was down in that Macintosh country, and they had pointed out, this was back in the early 90s, and they had pointed out that uh, as dry as it can be in this country, that... Uh, even back in biblical times when it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, Herman told me they only got 40 hundreds down there in, in McIntosh County. So I know that uh, we have some, we're not all sharing the same moisture. Carl Hoppe just wrote something up there. Okay. Uh, Carl, I see your pastures in central North Dakota are still short, either too cool or, or uh, grown. Ground. Ground, I think, is still dry. Uh, you, any any further comment there? Anything else anybody want to interject before I, I turn it over to Adnan to give us a weather outlook? outlook? Eastern part of Barton County could use three quarter and an inch. Western part's wet. Okay. Obviously, some uh, quite a quite a variation yet. Adnan, let's let's turn to you this morning to give us a uh, weather update and what what you might have to share related to the uh, outlook for the coming couple weeks. Uh, thank you. Uh, May was very wet in, in uh, half of the states. If you draw a straight line between southwest corner to northeast, uh, anywhere to the southeast, uh, the eastern portion of that uh, line received a lot of rain in May, uh, but to the East, uh, I mean west and north of that line, continue to stay dry. Uh, and in fact, the uh, the reports that I have been having, including the one I heard this morning, is confirming that. Um, and some of the uh, rainfall amounts were in in May were very uh, impressive, especially the one in the uh, easterns uh, along the Red River, especially Fargo, did receive 7.86 inch uh, in the month of May which was the wettest May, shattered the previous record by more than one inch. So some of these uh, records were very impressive. If you lived in western portion of that line and you have no idea what I'm talking about, probably, and I would like to hear from you. Um, if you look at the drought monitor again, uh, the western North Dakota still have a, a little drier than normal or uh, abnormally dry conditions or d not conditions. And if you disagree uh, with that depiction, and I would like to hear from you along with your uh, drought impact. Um, however, if you hang on maybe a day or two or so, um, I am looking at the forecast in the immediate couple days from today, uh, especially if you live in um, southwestern portions and, and you are looking at the greatest threat of a severe thunderstorm possible today into tonight. Uh, this is the Storm Prediction Center's forecast, which is um, very much likely of happening. 
So uh, if you live into the west of Bismarck, uh, McLean County, Ward, Mon Montreal, Williams County, and to the south of these counties, and uh, you are in the greatest threat of this uh, thunderstorm that is to uh, begin late this afternoon and, um, and spread into the entire state um, by tomorrow uh, noon. So this is the, uh, the strongest threat that I have into the next seven days. Um, and the amount of precipitation is uh, about one inch and possibly large hail of one inch and damaging wind uh, up to 60 miles per hour. So these are the immediate uh, the hazard that I see. Uh, the rest of the week is looking drier. Um, and again, I would like to hear your emails uh, that are coming to me if you disagree with the drought monitor. Um, it looks like uh, this thread is uh, the drought eraser for the western North Dakota. Uh, you might want to wait for a couple days and, and let me know if if it didn't happen or if it happened too much, um, this is this is the report that I have so far. Very good. Thank you for that update. Uh, any any questions for Adnan? Well, hearing none, we can make a quick trip around the state. We all just quickly had some uh, uh, here and there updates, but uh, let's start in the Northeast. As uh, Anybody in the Northeast that's on would like to uh, add to what, what you've heard so far? Anybody from the Northeast? Yeah, this is Angie Johnson. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I guess seeing no one else from the Northeast, I can give a little update. Uh, we could use, you know, a half inch of rain wouldn't hurt. Um, there's some areas in the county that are a little bit wetter than others, but for the most part, it's um, we could use a little bit uh, like they were chatting earlier. Uh, pastures, there's been a lot of cattle went out to pastures this weekend. Grass is pretty short. I'm kind of concerned on that. Um, they're going out pretty early with not a lot of grass out there. Um, so that'll be interesting to kind of keep an eye on and watch. But other than that, um, no crops, crops are looking great. Our, our sloughs and ponds are full again. And um, like I said, a, a half inch, three quarters of an inch wouldn't hurt. All right, thank you. Thank you, Angie. Uh, soil temperatures, have you checked those lately? Yeah, soil temps for the most part they look good. Um, they've been, at, you know, it, it kind of cooled off. We did get a little nip of frost here on oh, what was it Friday night into Saturday morning. But uh, checking the end on station, it did get uh, 29. It reached 29 um, Friday night and Saturday morning. A uh, few, the crops damage, I guess it hasn't really affected it because it wasn't cold for an extended amount of time. So no soil temps look good. We're just, just saw some edible bean fields up on, on Saturday. They looked good. Um, conditions, like I said, we just need some heat and, and things will roll right along. Very good. How about from the Southeast? Anybody from the Southeast would like to add to that? Yeah, this is Brock Shoulders in Richmond County. Um, I guess last week we got about uh, an inch to four inches in some places, and um, it's very wet in some areas, and and definitely um, got plenty of moisture for the time being. So, are you seeing some crop losses from flooding? Um, not yet, but I can imagine I will in the future. Sure. Anybody else from the southeast? Yeah, this is Kelsey Eglin from Emmons County. Um, we got about another inch over the weekend. Um, I think we're sitting pretty well, actually. Nobody's complaining about the rain. I mean, they would like it to stop so they could actually get back into the fields. Um, but at the same time, I've been told not to complain about it because we will take any moisture we can get. Um, 
But as of now, I mean, people were turning their cattle out into the pastures this past weekend. And I mean, our pastures are still, you know, they were slow to get growing. Um, they have grown a little, but I mean, everybody's getting them out there now. So hopefully that doesn't affect them too much. Sure thing. Let's slide over into the Southwest, Southwest update in addition to what Kurt shared earlier. Uh, this is Becky in Dunn County. Um, I guess this last week we kind of had two different days. I um, believe it was Tuesday and then Thursday again where we actually got uh, Tuesday we had anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch and a quarter in some places. And then we had another little about quarter inch shower come through again. Um, so moisture wise we're looking way better than we were. Um, you know, crops are, are slowly coming up. Um, a little heat here, hopefully if it gets 80 degrees today, will kind of help um, awaken some of our pasture and everything that's going on. Um, get them going a little better. Um, alfalfa's kind of slow coming too because we just haven't really had that heat to help give it the jump start. Sorry, folks, I muted myself and I was talking to the three people in the room. Anybody else from the Northwest <clears throat> would like to add to that? I see, uh, I see Chris, you're on. <clears throat> yes, we're here, but I would just, same report as others, um, so. Okay. Chris Augustine in from the Northwest, do you got anything from the station? Can you hear me, JW? Yes, we can. Please go. Okay. Okay. It logged me out or something. Um, in Minot, uh, during the month of May, we had about three and a quarter inches or three and a third inches. And uh, we had pretty good subsoil moisture before that. And my thought was when we started this whole drought call, uh, if we got an inch of rain, we should be sitting pretty well to get at least the crops going so then they could start uh, tapping into that subsoil moisture. Uh, and we've got a little bit more than that, but uh, we haven't gotten too much rain where it's really impeded in a lot of uh, a lot of the farming out this way, anyways. And um, Cirrus River was still flooding till about the 15th of May uh, in the Towner area, so a <laughs> little bit of both worlds at one point. Sure thing. Anybody else from the Northwest? This is Dan up in Burke, and uh, we could use a little shower, but we certainly don't need much, uh, especially right in the Bowbells area. Uh, we had 260 a week ago, and uh, but guys are pretty much getting finished up. We're looking now, it's kind of the isolated areas in the county that still are too wet, and guys are having trouble getting into stuff. But I would say we're about 99% finished with planting. Uh, the crops that are in, really, they just need warm weather. Soil temperatures uh, under bare ground are about 56 degrees at the end on station right now. Pastures are a little behind normal. Uh, they just need some good growing degree days. Thanks for that update, Dan. Well, as you can tell from the uh, short email this morning, I don't have an extended agenda and uh, offer this opportunity. If there's anything else you'd like to bring up that would be germane to the discussion, since you do have the ears of about 19 participants, plus people sitting in the room here, is there, is there anything uh, uh, crops or ag uh, livestock related that somebody would like to bring up for the good of the order? Um, this is Irene Grace. Can you hear me? 
you're a little weak. Would you either closer to your mic if you could? I'll see what we can do here. Is that any better? Yes. Yes, that's better. Thank you, Irene. Okay. Um, we have the people in the area are saying that we have a tick epidemic. The wood ticks are just frightful. At what point can they actually be detrimental to livestock? I don't have an answer for you. I'll have to. I'll have to look into that. We yeah, one, of course, it's, it's more obvious on the horses. One of the girls the other night pulled 40 ticks out of her horse's tail and more out of the mane. Yeah, it's definitely tick season. Sounds like it's in the high gear there. Definitely here. You, you, you come home at night and you see everybody sitting on the porch picking them off their dogs. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, well, point noted. Uh, we're doing some recording here and, and uh, refer to our vet medical folks for some help who are not able to participate in the call this morning. <clears throat> yeah. According to the comments, ticks are, pulling ticks. ticks are terrible. I guess that's going to be the word for today. It's going to be a wild week of weather. Sorry for the alliteration. And, uh, and ticks as well. <clears throat> Any, anybody else have something you'd like to bring up that might be of, of interest to others <clears throat> or you'd like to question if others are experiencing similar challenges? <clears throat> I'll just bring something up here, JW. Um, so did Becky, Becky talked about alfalfa being a little bit slow and you put out a press release about alfalfa winter kill and things like that. Can we get a sense from people what the degree of winter kill is on the alfalfa out in the counties? I'm glad you brought that up. It's one of the things I was wondering. It appeared that from earlier discussion today that crop damage is from frost is not a, apparently not a problem. What are you seeing for uh, setbacks and forages, particularly in, in alfalfa stands? Anybody? JW, can you hear me? You sure? I sure can. Okay, go ahead. We had some damage here in Mercer County uh, in alfalfa. Canola, I know of a guys that have had to replant some canola because of frost damage. And I had a guy on Friday tell me that he replanted a quarter of corn, which was over 75% damage to frost. I would say alfalfa here in Mercer County is probably 20 to 25% loss due to frost. We definitely do have some damage. It's coming back quite well, but it's going to be a little thin on the first cutting but hopefully with the moisture availability we'll be able to get a second cutting guys don't seem too concerned about it to be honest with you they're happy they're, they're happy that the rain came with the cold weather so that was a mixed blessing I guess um, so we do have some damage here in uh, Mercer County I guess end on reported Two weeks ago, it got all the way down to 19, according to Endon's Hazen Weather Station here. And then on Sunday night, it showed 27 for about two hours. So we did have a frost here. Uh, would have been, excuse me, Friday night. I got Friday night, we had a frost here again in Mercer County. So we've definitely had two frosts here in the last two weeks. So that's where we're at. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else in terms of uh, frost? Okay. Hoppy. Not much winter killing alfalfa. There's some frosted leaves. Yeah. All right. As you can see, Carl has added a, some comments in the conversation column. Anybody else? I know I've gotten, I've gotten a few calls, and, and I talked with Mary Berg, and she had a few calls about the winter kill issues as well, so that was that was what I'd heard, just open winter, kind of more east, but I figured I'd throw that out there to see if anybody else had sure. other concerns sure. out there with their alfalfa. Sounds to reaffirm what we were hearing about a month ago, coming from the agronomy side, that from here east there was older stands were were suffering from frost open winter. Just out of curiosity, so Kelsey or 
Brock, are you guys seeing much replant on sugar beets? I have not so far. Okay. I haven't heard of any so far either. Okay. Talks of Northern Valley people, and they said there's been some replants, but I didn't know anybody in the South had had that issue. Carl. A alfalfa side for Cass County, it's really spotty. Even, you know, we're 30 miles west of um, Fargo here, and even some of our alfalfa fields for the family side, it's just really spotty on that winter kill. But back in Dickey County on my parents' farm, my dad's alfalfa got hit really hard, but it's kind of coming back pretty nicely. But he said he could definitely use some heat for that. So. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Somebody else was trying to speak there. I think. To, to the yeah, JW, this was Craig. I had a question for Carl. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead, Craig. Any concerns, issues, if cattle would be grazing this frost damage stuff? The alfalfa, whatever, I don't know if anybody's really got any out on alfalfa right now, but any concern for cattle to feed frost damage forages? Um, for the forages that we have up now, no. You know, we get into some of those sorghum sedans, and then we've, of course, got some big issues, but... Um, now I guess the majority of the questions that we're fielding are people who are trying to deal with these winter kill pastures or winter kill alfalfa stands and, and then it just it's going back to the whole uh, potentials with bloat and anything else that we have um, concerns of just grazing the, the high legume content pastures. Okay second question when they do this first cutting in a month from now, roughly time frame, to be ahead of the game, do they need to manage it any differently than they would normally? Are you referring to alfalfa, Craig? Yeah, alfalfa, when they start cutting it and baling it and stuff like that, anything to worry about? Because, you know, I know some of my guys, some of that has been frosted. Or, so I, to what degree, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking some of it is probably 20% or better, you know. So the top leaves are going to definitely be probably killed off or darkened in color in a month from now when they go out to cut it. Do they need to do anything differently as far as bathing it and storing it and things like that or nothing to worry about? I can't think of anything you'd have to worry about uh commonly questions will come up about nitrate poisoning and some of those issues that's not a factor with alfalfa alfalfa converts its nitrate so quickly that you're not going to see a uh, that kind of that kind of issue my experience over the years uh, suggests that as I look back people often delayed cutting and it's never been a good never been a productive practice to delay cutting on alfalfa just because you're waiting for it especially with this moisture would be it's, if you can cut it, get it up and give the moisture a chance to bring on a second crop. Now I realize second crop is a is an anomaly for some in the West, but with the moisture you've had, I know that you've gotten more than one cutting of alfalfa out there. As far as how you handle it, the if it's going into a silage, the silage practices still apply, and if it's going into hay, those practices apply as well. Just make sure it's dry enough before you put it up, so you don't have a, a mold issue. But you're not, uh, you're not, otherwise you're not uh, going to have any critical health challenges with it, especially with alfalfa. As Carl said, now when we get into the sorghum sedans, some of those issues, which are going to be later in the year, and who knows what later in the year has to bring. No. So, Craig, I don't think other than using good production practices, I I cannot think of any. Uh, hidden problems that you would be you would uncover with uh, with alfalfa. Yeah, and Craig, I can't really comment on, you know, from the the production side on the alfalfa that, you know, timing of cutting in this unique condition if that's going to impact the regrowth or anything like that. I just I don't know. The other thing that Carl Hoppy just put up there and I see he just had to leave for a search committee meeting, but he did put up uh, and this isn't really related to alfalfa or frost, but this is for that uh, you know, we've got a ton of moisture out there. If we do get some good heat units, uh, we're going to have some pretty rapid pasture growth. And he just did put out a caution on his little text there about some grass tetany or potential grass tetany issues. Um, and again, this is this is all about grass growth and um, 
you know, kind of how nutrients are partitioned in these plants. Main issues or potential with, with grass tetany are pastures that do not have a lot of extra trash. So pastures that were grazed down heavily last year, those kind that look like golf courses when you drive by them. Uh, if we do get good lush growth on those, um, potential biggest impacts are, are cows that are right in their peak of lactation. And it has to do with a, a calcium balance and a magnesium balance. So we can watch out for those kind of issues if we, we do come into some cases of tetany. Um, and we've got a bulletin out about that. And maybe I can just kind of forward that out to people again to do a little bit of reading on some preventative measures and just a little awareness about what might be happening if this does turn into nice, uh, good grass growth weather. The other thing that's unique about that is is the type of days that tetany really seems to be uh, prevalent if it's going to be out there. It's when we still have some uh, cloud cover. So, you know, this warmer conditions with, with more cloud cover, uh, those conditions are, are good setup for grass tetany. Carl. Yes, sir. To refresh my memory, I'm getting old. You said when cows are at maximum or high lactating, when is when would that exactly be? Peak now? lactation is is basically now. You know, 60 to 90 days after calving. Those are the the cows that are going to be most critical, or, or most uh, susceptible. Okay, and so the the way you manage that is that if you've got pastures that you know are that you know you left them like a golf golf course a year ago, uh, we try to not put these these heavy milking cows out on those. Um, if you had good grazing management practices or you had the the luxury of being able to leave some excess forage standing out there, um, we try to get cows onto those types of pastures. Now, if you've got yearling pasture or yearling cattle or, or replacement heifers or whatever else, those cattle aren't really susceptible to that. If you've got bulls that need to be pastured somewhere before breeding season here for a bit, uh, I would certainly put those cattle out if we need to graze those pastures that, that have that rapid growth. And again, it's not an alfalfa issue. This is a cool season grass issue. And so uh, we get into some of the crested wheat grass and, and things like that. Those are the types of forages that, that are really going to leave cows susceptible to tetany. Thanks, Carl, for that, that update. And recall, uh, these are all, all this stuff is, is online with, in, in bulletin form. And it's good to uh, refresh your memory of what some of the challenges might be. Uh, anybody else? This is, a bit of, this is an open forum right now. A a anybody would like to ask a question or, or further extend some discussion related to livestock, weather, other current happenings? Uh, this is Alicia. Is there any updates about birds at fairs? Is there anything changing since last call? No idea. No, I've not heard a thing. Thanks for asking. Uh, we'll have to do some checking, but uh, ha have you heard something, or is there anything? I have, and I was just trying to see if there was anything else that we should know about. So. Well, I the don't, general recommendation I don't around the area is, I'm sorry, it sounded like somebody else responded. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know anything about the North Dakota decision on poetry, but I know Minnesota shut everything down. There's no shows at all in Minnesota. That message came out about a week ago. Um, to my understanding, they're supposed to be meeting June 10th again. Uh, the North Dakota State Vet, uh, I'm not sure who they're all meeting with, but they're supposed to have a meeting on June 10th to relook at this from what I was told about a week ago. <clears throat> Craig, you are correct. I was in Minnesota last week, and that was all in the news. Every poultry exhibit from county to state fair has been uh, shut down for the year, and they're using the opportunity to use it as a, uh, a teaching opportunity for H and FFA presenting like related uh, demonstrations and otherwise really encouraging a lot of outreach to uh, help understand 
as well as appreciate the importance of, uh, of animal health. I think North Dakota, the last discussion that we had is that we should probably uh, do likewise, but I don't think that I've heard from the state veterinarian that they were that they were canceled. So we'll have to we'll get some clarity on that, or ask uh, Susan to if there is a proclamation, that's the right choice of words. If there is a, a recommendation, and uh, and get that out to our on our list serve. Hey, Jared, are you still on? Yeah. Uh, so your your fair is like the the eleventh of June, is that correct? Correct. Okay, so you're one of the earliest. Have you guys done anything about any policies on your poultry side at all? Yeah, we canceled the poultry show completely. Okay. Has anybody else out there gone ahead and and done some of these cancellations? This is Alicia. We did too. Um, after the state fair canceled theirs, we did ours too. But I'm just kind of, I'm the one I'm really worried or wondering about is the eggs, if people should be bringing eggs too. Hey, Alicia, this is Kelsey. I talked to Dean the other day about the egg situation because I had some members asking it, and he um, contacted Susan Keller at the state, and she said if the eggs are clean and dried prior to be taken to the show for an exhibit, um, mm -hmm. that they shouldn't be a concern of any sort as long as they're coming from a, um, a non-infected farm. And so those are obviously just in Dickey and Lamore County. So she said that the, the eggs are fine. Okay, thank you. Yep. And I see Carla has added to the comments, Carla Ryan, that their uh, July 9, 10, 11 fairs canceled poultry, as well as addressed the petting zoo, which is an important point here. And other people typing away feverishly. <laughs> the, uh, the comments are rolling in. Becky said the same thing. Well, great. It looks to see that everybody is on top of that and exercising on the side of caution Becky's because of the crazy. magnitude of the issue. And so I think it's good good practice Damn. to cancel the poultry shows. Any other issues? We certainly don't have to take any more of your time today if there's nothing else that you uh, wish to bring up. But since we have still have 18 participants online, plus the folks in the waiting. office here, is there anything yeah. else anybody would like to bring up? Uh, it's still an yeah. open forum. Yeah, JW, I got another question. Sorry for all the questions today. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, and I can't even remember what, but this pig deal, is that good to go now? I mean, obviously, I think we've read the problem has been solved, but has there been any more updates or anything on that deal with the with the pigs that we were fighting last year are we good or is there still issues out there just curious it kind of just popped into my head when we started to talking about canceling poetry shows Craig it's a valid question and, and I'm I'm guilty of not looking into it before this meeting not anticipating that question uh, my my sense is because we've not heard anything that pigs are good to go but I can't that's off. That's off the record. <laughs> uh, Alan's taking some notes here, and, and by the way, these notes and, and the archive will be up for those that want to review this or, or weren't able to attend today because of prior commitments. But uh, <clears throat> since we've not heard anything, I'm not anticipating there's a problem. But we'll, we should get some clarity on that as well. Well, judging by the silence, I think we've exhausted most of your questions. So last chance, if you've been thinking about something and hesitating, I'll give you a, a few more seconds to ask a question. This is Becky in Dunn County. I guess I don't have a question as much as I just wanted to let everybody know if anybody's interested. Um, Dunn County was able to secure one of the sites for the um, FEMA uh, tabletop exercise that they're going to be having it'll be June 18th um, it's gonna be based off of kind of how to handle a livestock emergency at a county fair you know if we would have an outbreak or something that way um, so if anybody is interested and would like to attend or come with um, and join us you are more than welcome to uh, just contact me and um, I can get you the information on that as well 
Thank you, Becky, for offering that. And, and since you have our ears, uh, could you s give us the date and the place again? It'll be June 18th in Kilder at our ambulance hall, um, starting at 10 o'clock Mountain Time. Okay, and that will be a hands-on enactment of an, uh, a uh, pending emergency? Yep, it is basically going to be how to, you know, if something would come up, um, you know, kind of the step-by-steps that you should take, um, you know, to help combat that um, as well. Uh, it's going to be actually, it's a nationwide um, tabletop exercise. They're having it three days, and um, we'll actually be over uh, Ivan Network um, with nine other facilities throughout the nation that are all going to be participating in it. Okay, yeah, very good. If you have the opportunity to participate in one of those, I highly encourage it. And most of the specialists here have been involved in them in some sort or another, usually through our national affiliations with the breeds or species that we work with. And I participated in one a couple of years ago in Kansas City on FMD. And they are quite quite revealing. Uh, there's a lot to think about. That you just uh, it's, it's well worth your time. I encourage you to participate if you can fit it into your schedule. And so I'm assuming, Becky, that's an invitation for agents and others to come on over and, and sit in? Yep. Very good. Thank you. Anybody else? JW, I got one more thing, I guess. This is Craig. You said one more last time. I know. <laughs> Go ahead, Craig. I'll just throw it out there since quite a few were on the call here. Um, if anybody is interested, on the 15th and 16th of June, I'll be conducting a tractor safety school for kids 13 to 16 years of age. So if they want more information or if you have any kids that would like to attend that, give me a call. Thank you. Uh, they should be thanking you. You're a glutton for punishment to take on tractor safety schools. Uh, good for you. Hey, Craig, can you give the... Um times and dates or uh, times and locations for that it's 15th and 16th of june here in buell at the Bueller civic center from 8 30 to 5 30 those two days uh, they can call me for more information it's 50 dollars. actually rick schmidt is going to be helping me also i didn't realize it but according to north dakota law which isn't very well enforced if there is any kids the ages of 13 to 16 years old that do not have a valid driver's license they need this class in order to work on a farm other than their parents to be according to the specs of the law I just learned that about three months ago so anyway it's available if you want more information call my office and we can get it sent out to you I did send it out email to MPU nine and ten but if kids want to travel we'll take them there's still room so hey craig do you know how long that law has been in existence is this one of the new child labor things or is this something dating back beyond that from what i can tell it's been on the books for at least 20 years huh. yeah craig i, I bet there are, there are people breaking that law everywhere yeah. I, as i can remember going to tractor safety school Oh, I sh I'm lying. 30 years ago, I went to one, and I was told then. So I went to one in Park River 30 years ago. Brad wasn't there yet, but he was close. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you're right. It has been on the books. I participated in my first, as an agent, my first tractor camp 40 years ago this month and at Western 4-H. And, uh, it, uh, yeah, that, that's been on the books. It's because nothing really counts or is enforced when it goes uh, in the family but then as soon as you start working for relatives or others you're supposed to have this training and I know one of the challenges we had at that time was just sending us kids that we were getting to the point where we were transfer kids that didn't even have tractor experience let alone the safety so we were teaching them how to drive a tractor and that got to be a bit of a challenge and I imagine it's going to be more than that with you but yeah they're, they need to be aware of that that's that uh, is in place but it really hasn't been enforced to my knowledge. Okay, everybody. Last chance. Good timing. Wow. Perfect. <laughs> all right. Well, hearing none, wish you all a, a 
good and prosperous, uh, safe and prosperous June. Remember, June is Dairy Month. Uh, <laughs> on June, June 14th, the Van Vidoff Dairy in the Carrington area is hosting Breakfast on the Farm. That's a Sunday. And uh, if you want to see a well-run operation, it's one of the top operations in the state, milking 1,200 cows. Uh, you can add that to your to your calendars. Uh, I guess at this point, it's really a question whether we set up another meeting. This one was a drought or not, and since you fixed that, I guess unless there's some other crisis, now if somebody would suggest that you'd like to meet again in about a month, we can certainly do that. Any any thoughts on that before parting? Hearing none, I will presume that everybody's busy enough this summer, and we will we'll add one if if the case uh, if if the situation arises. So with that.